Hello everyone, we will continue the topic about dictionary and in the previous video, we started with the concept of check table and value table. And in the previous video, we covered check table. So check table works at field level. Yes, it works at field level because you need to select a field of a table. You need to click on to the field of a table whenever you are clicking on to foreign key buttons. So there you have a option to pass the check table. Generally, every interviewer will ask, yes, the where you have seen the option to pass the check table. So whenever you are selecting a column and clicking on to foreign key button, there you have a option to pass the check table. After that, whatever that data you will insert for this particular column, it will be checked against that particular table. Entry should be in that particular table. Now we will move on to the concept of value table. So what is value table? Value table works at domain level. So this is the most most important or we can say the first difference between check table and value table. So check table works at field level value table works at domain level. It means in that domain itself, we have the provision to pass the value table. So if I will show you in the system, I will go for suppose domain of order number. Suppose this is data element. If I will go for domain of order number, I will go for value range. So in that domain itself, we have the option to pass the value table. So value table works at domain level. Now how value table will benefit it, will be benefited to us. So for that, what I will do, I will go for the creation of two more tables. I will go for the creation of two more dependent or we can say secondary or we can say foreign key tables. Our primary key table is one that is order header table. As of now, we have one dependent table that is order item table. I will go for the creation of two more dependent tables and then we will go for the concept of value table into those two dependent tables. So firstly, I will create two more dependent tables. One will be order status table. In this table, I will store the status of the order. Means order is delivered or not delivered. Yes means it is delivered. No means it is not delivered. Similarly, I will create a vendor details table in which it will store the vendor is internal or external. So I'm just creating two more dependent tables because our major target is how we can make the concept of value table clear. You can go for any number of tables. So what I will do, I will go for these two tables. Now I will go to SC11 transaction code and I will create two more tables. And you can see in, in these two tables also, the most thing is we have order number because anyways, we need to go for dependent or independent. So order number must be there, yes because common column is required. Suppose I will create table. Suppose I will say Z O R D. Suppose status underscore 28 because we are using serial number 28. So I use 28. I will go for create. I will give the short description. Suppose order status table. I will go for delivery class. Suppose I will take delivery class SC. I will consider this as customizing table. Display maintenance allowed. Yes. Suppose the first column in the table is MA and DT. It is the client number of SAP system and the data element for the same is MA and DT. It is the primary key of the table. Now, same order number will be there. It is the primary key and we already have the data element of order number. So I will simply use that. There is no need to create again because description is same. 
there is no need to create new data element yes now i will go for next column order status suppose i will go for o status name of the column o status now here i will create a new data element now people will think in the previous case is what you did you created that domain first then you created that data element and then you are using in that table here you are creating table first then you will are creating a data element see it's just two different approaches just think previously what we did we created that domain then we created that data element in the data element we have that domain and that data element we used in that table so this is called as which approach bottom up approach domain data element table now here what i am doing i am creating a table in the table i will go i will create data element and in the data element i will create that domain so it is your top down approach anyways we are creating all the three things just different different approach we can say see anyways result is same just we are using two different approaches so in the previous cases we used which approach bottom up approach we are starting from the bottom and going to the up going to the table here i started with the table and i am going till the bottom and i am going to the domain suppose i will give some name to the data element suppose z d e o stat underscore 28 yes it is saying you want to create it is not active yes i want to create yes i just click again i will go for local object yes data element i want to have you seen same to same screen order status now i will go for the creation of domain anyways we are creating all the three things firstly i will give the field label you all know the purpose of data element is to provide the field label o r d stat okay here i will give order status order status order status now i will simply simply create that domain now i will give some name to that domain suppose z d o r d stat underscore 28 yes no active domain available yes i want to create yes i will go for local object yes i want to create that domain so i will write order status order status is character one i will go to value range yes now here i will pass y is for yes and n is for no the same we gave in the payment mode yes c credit card d debit card and net banking so domain done now we will go for data element you can see we are going for same to same thing now we will go for the table this is your table now in the table yes we'll go for technical settings i will go for data class i will go for awp l2 because we choose the delivery class sc customizing suppose it will take zero number of records i will say now i will go for back button now i will activate that table i will not generate the table maintenance generator as of now i will generate at the last and then i will let you know why so our this table is ready this is your one more dependent table as of now there is no relationship assigned yes because here we have not given check table nothing yes it will accept anything now we will go for next table next table is z o r d vendor 
I will go for create. I will write order vendor details. I will take delivery class C, display maintenance allowed, column MA and DT, data element MA and DT. Yes, it is the primary key. Same order number. This is primary key. This is the data element. Now, I cannot use the last data element. See, I cannot use the last data element because last data element description is order status. Here, the description is vendor details. You cannot use the same data element. I need to create a new data element because we have a description is changing. Now I will simply, simply write, suppose order vendor. I will simply write vendor. Now I will create new data element. ZDE order vendor. Suppose I will write W V E N D underscore 28. Yes, it is not active. I want to create same thing. Previously you are creating and you are passing. Now I'm creating from here itself. This is our order vendor. Now I will go for field label first. Suppose I will simply write vendor. Vendor, vendor, vendor. Now I will pass ZD order vendor underscore 28. Yes, I will go for that domain. Now people will think why you are not using the existing domain type and length is same. See, possible values are different. Here we have yes and no. Here we have internal and external. So I cannot use the same domain. So I will simply, simply go for now character one. This is our character one. I will go for value range. I stands for internal. E stands for external. possible values. I will activate that domain. I will activate the data element. And now I will activate the table. First, I'll go for technical settings. Same to same, A double P L2. I will save and I will activate. So our second dependent table is also ready. Now, as of now, there is no relation between order header table and these table. This is our order header table. There is no relation between these table and these table because this table is not acting as a check table here. So that part we will achieve with the help of value table. So what is the summary of this particular video? In this video, we started with the concept of value table and we covered a point that value table works at domain level. I showed you in that domain, we have a provision of the value table. To any interviewer, the first difference, you always have to say this, check table works at field level, value table works at field, work, value table works at domain level, sorry. Check table field level, value table works at domain level. Now to make the concept of value table clear, I created two more dependent table. One is to store the order status. One is to store the order vendor details. Anyways, in these two tables also the main main column is order number. So this is your header table. This is your primary table. These are your foreign key table, dependent table, secondary table. As of now, yes, there is no relation between these. We will go for setting the relation by using the value table because that is our topic. And next video, 
is extremely important because we will assign the relationship with the help of value table and it will automatically come as a check table. So that part we will continue in the next video. So that's it in this video. Thank you.